we are going to circle Mercury for the first time. Mercury is at the very edge of our solar system. Mercury is a small planet that no one lives on. It is wrapped in a web of mystery and intrigue. From the outside, this world doesn't seem to be important at all. But new NASA investigations have shown some shocking things about Mercury that no one saw coming. Some of the most amazing findings, like data from the James Webb Telescope, have caused debate in the scientific community. Many of them imply that there may be alien species hiding on Earth. In the midst of all the crazy news and crazy conspiracy ideas, scientists are coming up with a new plan. Take off Mercury's strange masks and find out all of its dark secrets for good. This is the grand plan. What mind-blowing facts have scientists learned about Mercury? What groundbreaking ideas do scientists have for this strange neighbor in the galaxy? Check out this movie to learn about what NASA was hiding on Mercury all along, which was finally found by the Webb Telescope. The planets in our solar system don't just swing around like a merry-go-round in space. The eight planets in this mysterious ring system each have their own interesting traits. Planets like Jupiter and Mars may have gotten all the attention because of how important they are, but Mercury is also an interesting planet that gets lost in the crowd. When you put planets in order of how close they are to the Sun, Mercury is at the summit. Earth is 150 million kilometers away from the Sun, but it is only 58 million kilometers away. Also, Mercury is very small compared to Earth. Its width is only 3,000 miles. Because it has a very small orbital radius around the Sun, Mercury is the planet that goes around the Sun the fastest, at 47 kilometers per s. Mercury makes one full spin in only 59 days, which means that a year on Mercury is only 88 days or three months on Earth. Some of the most interesting things about Mercury are how small it is and how fast it moves. From far away on the cosmic map, it even looks like a world where people could live. Scientists have always been interested in the small planet, but it hasn't gotten as much attention as most of its friends in the galaxy. Mercury was seen for the first time in writing in 265 BC. In 1639, Gassendi was one of the first scientists to study the planet. During those early years, however, scientists only had bits and pieces of data because they did all of their study with old telescopes and poor scientific equipment. Thanks to the work of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, real information about Mercury didn't come out until the 1960s. The first real pictures of Mercury were shown to the world by NASA a few years ago. These huge pictures of Mercury made it look like a beautiful and complicated cosmic being, but they didn't come cheap. Scientists planned and worked hard for years to study Mercury, but all they could do was take a quick look at it. The truth is that because Mercury is so close to the Sun, scientists can't spy on it like they can on other worlds. When optical tools like telescopes look at Mercury for too long, the Sun's harsh rays and bright light can hurt them. Scientists can only look at the tiny planet for a short time at a time so that their tools don't get broken. The planet is so close to the Sun that not even the James Webb Telescope can look at it. It is strange that this small, close planet is harder to study than planets farther away, even though they are warmer and pull more heavily on Earth from the Sun. It's more of a suicide mission than a star mission to send a probe to Mercury. The probe has to change to fit the temperature, atmosphere, and gravity pull of the space station. If it doesn't, it will break down. You would be shocked to learn that Mercury speeds 30 miles per second around the Sun. At this breakneck speed, it orbits the Sun faster than any other planet in our solar system. Just so you know, this makes it hard for satellites to study the planet or land on its surface. Only two space projects have been able to reach Mercury so far. Mariner 10, which took off on November 3, 1973, and Messenger, which took off on August 3, 2004. And these are the main ships that will go to Mercury. NASA planned both of these trips, and they are the main sources of almost all the information we have today about Mercury. For starters, the Mariner 10 probe did three flybys of Mercury. Each one showed the cracked, crater-filled surface and the magnetic field that surrounds it. For those of you who are interested, this ship had a magnetometer, two telescopes, spectrometers, an ultraviolet spectrometer, and a plasma analyzer. NASA planned for the Mariner 10's trip to Mercury to give them as much information as possible. As luck would have it, the probe slowly made its way to the small, fast planet with the help of Venus's gravity. When Mariner 10 got close to Mercury, scientists were shocked to see that its surface was so jumbled. There were many craters and lines on it, just like on the Moon, 
It was amazing to see what Mercury looked like on Mariner because it was so different from what scientists thought it would be. The spacecraft found a rough surface on the planet as well as a weak magnetic field and a core that was much bigger than normal. Over 2,700 pictures were taken of Mercury by the Mariner. These pictures gave scientists a unique look at the planet's scenery. When the Mariner flew by for the second time on September 21, 1974, it took pictures of the planet's southern polar area. The last time Mariner 10 flew by Earth was in March 1975. After that, it stopped sending messages to Earth. The spacecraft had run out of gas, so it couldn't make any more orbits, according to later studies. After 30 years, NASA's messenger went to the not-so-distant planet and carried on the Mariner 10's great work. In contrast to its predecessor, Messenger did more than just fly by Earth. It also managed to go around it. Because of this, scientists were able to learn more interesting things about the world. With the interesting pictures of Mercury in hand, NASA set out on this trip to get more information. This time, it wasn't just about taking shots. The agency also wanted to learn more about the planet's atmosphere and chemicals that make it up. NASA also had to look into the planet's magnetic field and learn a lot about its minerals and core. As you might have guessed, the Messenger probe had all the tools it needed for this very important task. The probe was interesting because it went around Mercury three times and took about 200,000 pictures of the planet. These shots were different from those taken by the Mariner mission because they showed both sides of the planet. As part of the Messenger mission, the probe got very close to the planet and was flying about 215,000 kilometers above its surface. Because it was so close, the probe could take shots of Mercury's bright and dark sides. NASA learned that our dear sister planet had unusually high levels of calcium and magnesium on its night side by looking closely at the pictures and matching them to data from the spacecraft's instruments. In addition, the planet's magnetic field seems to be skewed in a strange way, with bigger and more intense fields in the north. Scientists were confused by this strange pattern in the magnetic field for years until they did a lot of study to figure out what was going on. But when the secrets were finally made public, it shocked everyone in the scientific world. Let me explain. Mercury's strange magnetic field comes from the way the planet was made at its center. Worlds have magnetic fields that come from processes going on in their cores. Just look at Earth as an example. The iron in the Earth's core goes from liquid to solid as you move toward the outer core. It is the steady or gradual solidification of liquid iron in the core that creates the magnetic field. That is, every day more solid iron is being made in the center of our world as liquid iron cools and crystallizes into solid iron. When it comes into contact with the liquid iron around it, a type of convective current is made as the Earth spins around its center. Eventually, strong electric currents are made that create a huge magnetic field that goes all the way to space. This is the exact way that the Earth works and how its magnetic field lines are made. It's not the same for Mercury, though. In fact, Mercury's way of working is so strange that experts have no idea how it works. A new study led by Hao Huai from the University of California, Los Angeles, found that iron changes from a liquid to a solid at the edge of the core. This is very different from Earth where the change from liquid to solid happens at the inner edge of the core. Huai said, We had figured out how the Earth works, and Mercury is another terrestrial rocky planet with an iron core, so we thought it would work the same way. But it's not working the same way. It's like a snowstorm in which the snow forms at the top of the cloud, the middle of the cloud, and the bottom of the cloud, too. Our study of Mercury's magnetic field indicates iron is snowing throughout this fluid that is powering Mercury's magnetic field. It was found that Huai's study matched data from NASA's messenger mission after more research. After hearing this amazing news, scientists think that planets can make magnetic fields in more than one way. Earth and Mercury both have sulfur and iron in their cores, but there are some changes between them that can make them very different, as you can see in their magnetic fields. But the difference between Earth and Mercury isn't just in Mercury's magnetic field. This celestial body doesn't seem to follow a lot of other rules, Scientists didn't understand why the planet's temperature could rise to over 430 degrees C during the day and drop to as low as minus 170 degrees Celsius at night. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, which makes this strange situation possible. Mercury's exosphere isn't as thick as Earth's. Even worse, 
This exosphere is just made up of atoms that were blasted off the surface by solar winds and meteoroids. They think that anything that would have made a proper atmosphere over Mercury quickly evaporates into space because Mercury is so hot. In addition, Mercury's side that faces the Sun gets very hot because it doesn't have an atmosphere. This is the most shocking part. A full day on Mercury lasts twice as long as its year. Each day is equal to 176 Earth days, not 88 Earth days like people think. This means that one side of Mercury is always hit with intense heat and sunlight, while the night side doesn't get much of either. It's mostly because of the lack of atmosphere and the extra long day that the temperatures are changing so quickly. There have been a lot of wild theories in the scientific world for a long time about Mercury's magic temperatures. Mercury might be a good place to live because it has a magnetic field and rocky land. But Mercury's crazy weather would make it almost impossible to live there. However, some controversial aspects of this mysterious planet have made many people wonder if it's possible to find life on Mercury. This has led to questions like, what if Mercury is actually inhabitable? And if it is, what feasible life forms could exist on the planet? The surface of Mercury has been pretty cool so far. The planet looks like it has a lot of impact scars, just like our moon. Because the moon has so many craters, some of which look like domes, it has been the subject of many debates and alien plot theories for a long time. Even though there is no proof of these kinds of bases on other planets, many people have started to blame Mercury, which suggests the possibility of such species. Impact craters are usually caused by asteroids, but spaceships could also be to blame for some of them. To give you an example, NASA's Messenger probe made a huge impact when it hit the surface of Mercury on April 30, 2015. There are many craters, cracks, hills, and even signs of lava flows today. That being said, what if some of these other craters were made by similar alien ships or activity? There are also some shocking facts about Mercury that have led to conspiracy theories. For example, the ice and water that can be found at the bottom of the holes at the planet's north and south poles. In fact, a new study from the Planetary Science Institute found that the North Pole of the world might be the best place for extreme life forms to live. Conditions in these habitable places are a lot like those on Earth. The only difference is that they're below the surface of the planet. When the pictures from NASA's messenger probe were put together to make a map, this shocking result was reached. Based on this information, scientists found that some salt glaciers on Earth are full of volatile chemicals that allow living things to survive. So even though Mercury is very close to the sun and has a difficult environment, these experts think that if we look hard enough, we might find aliens or some other kind of life. One of the most amazing things that NASA's messenger probe did was draw a picture of Mercury that showed all the craters and basins that were on the surface of the planet. This gave NASA experts a lot of chances to learn more about the planet's rocks and minerals. But that's not all. The probe also found out what Mercury is made of. As it turns out, the surface of the lonely world is made up of 46% oxygen, 12% magnesium, 26% silicon, 7% aluminum, and 4% calcium. Scientists also found that the world has an unusually low amount of iron and an unusually high amount of volatile elements like sulfur. This finding caused debate in the scientific community because it showed that Mercury is not the same as the other planets in the solar system. It is known that planets in the solar system have more iron than sulfur, especially in their cores. Finding a planet that didn't follow this rule was a surprise, and it made Mercury more interested in itself as a whole. Scientists have recently noticed something else strange about the planet. It has a strange ring of dust around it. Of course, this caused more trouble. Plenty of scientists were worried that Mercury might not have a planetary ring because it looked too small to have one. The rings around Jupiter and Saturn are the only ones in our solar system that we know about. Jupiter has a small number of faint rings that were found for the first time by Voyager 1 in 1979. The rings around Saturn, on the other hand, are very clear and can be seen from Earth. These rings are made up of billions of small particles, some of which are much bigger than others. They are all moving around the Sun. The many rings that surround Saturn are made up of both water ice and crushed rocks. The rings around Saturn and Jupiter are thought to have formed when our solar system was just starting out. Even more experts think that the fact that these planets are so huge played a big part. The width of Saturn is about 10 times that of Earth. It has been able to gather a huge number of small rocks and particles into a ring around it. 
Jupiter, on the other hand, is almost 12 times the width of Earth. It has about 95 moons and its own ring system of very small space objects. Since Saturn and Jupiter are so much bigger than Earth, it makes sense that their strong gravitational pull and stability helped them pull in all this cosmic matter and junk. Then this makes me wonder how Mercury, the tiniest planet in our solar system, makes its own rings. The dust ring around Mercury is about 9 million miles wide, just so you know. Scientists still don't know how these rings came to be. A lot of people think, though, that they might be from meteors that hit Earth in the past. That this idea might be true was agreed upon by a group of scientists led by Dr. Peter Pinay, a research associate at NASA. His explanation was that it is usual for space rocks to keep hitting planets like Mercury that don't have a strong atmosphere. So it's possible that some of these things that crashed may have sent out pieces that, over time, formed the ring of dust we see today. A lot of other scientists seem to agree with this too. They say that Mercury's small size and thin layer must be because its surface is constantly being worn down by meteors and other natural disasters. Also, compared to Earth's, Mercury's upper shell, which is also known as the crust and mantle, is very thin. It's only about 250 miles thick. As a reference, scientists found that about 85% of Mercury's radius is made up of its metallic core. Because of this, a lot of smart people think that Mercury must have been through terrible things that stripped it of its top layer, leaving it as the tiny planet we see today. Still, all of these are just guesses. As of now, NASA and other space agencies still need to learn more about Mercury's interior to solve all of its mysteries. People did the world a favor when the Mariner and Messenger probes braved the sun's harsh radiation and cosmic obstacles to get a quick look at a planet that no one thought was possible to reach. The Mariner 10 and Messenger missions were huge successes, even though they may not seem important in comparison to other important discoveries made by scientists and cosmologists recently. It's enough to praise these probes for having to deal with extreme heat and radiation while getting readings from the mystery planet. For these trips, NASA used cutting-edge technologies, some of which were even ahead of their time. With today's much better technology, there are plans to go even deeper into Mercury and find out its deadliest secrets. Without a doubt, the most amazing thing about Mercury that scientists have learned so far is its surface, which is rough and full of strange holes. It's simple to think that there's a lot more to discover in its mysterious scenery. It's possible that there are many more craters on Earth than have been named or discovered so far. The smallest of these craters is up to 9 miles across and up to 7 miles deep. The biggest of these craters is up to 963 miles across. Proposed study is the only way to really solve and explain this mystery. This kind of study can only be done up close by a very advanced spacecraft with cutting-edge tools that the Mariner and Messenger space probes did not have the ability to use. At this point, the only other space project that wants to go to Mercury is one that is being run by the European Space Agency and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. BP Colombo was the name of the idea behind this important partnership, and it went live on October 10, 2018. The groundbreaking spaceship has both a planetary orbiter and a magnetospheric orbiter. Its job is to study Mercury in great detail, including its interior. It is official that the Bepi Colombo will reach Mercury by December 2025. For now, all we can do is sit still and cross our fingers that this very important task doesn't go wrong. But for now, there's no question that compared to the other eight planets, Mercury is slowly becoming more well-known. For all we know, the Bepi Colombo could make a huge finding that puts it back at the top of our list of places to study in space. Thanks for seeing another video. Click on the video on your screen to see more videos like this one that will blow your mind.